All right, welcome back to web programming with the Go programming language. And uh, so far, our playlist is looking mighty awesome. We've got 41 videos in there. It's benefited 557 views. Some of those are the same people. And uh, to get there, you could just search for YouTube. We found this on YouTube, YouTube Todd McLeod. You could add Learn to Code if you want, but that's the first one that comes up because it's, no, it didn't, this one came up. And uh, these are like my personal videos where I like talk about life and stuff. And then this down here, it's the Learn to Code. And that's how you can get to that playlist. We are also going to be working with uh, this course outline. That's learning the Go programming language right there. And, uh, and then here is the outline for um, Web Dev with Go. So you can see the URL 11 capital L, I think that is. So now we are um, go learn web dev with Go. And to do that, we have this code repo, which is on GitHub. You could find it on GitHub by taking the entire course on greater cons, just getting everybody orientated to where all the resources are. Go, web dev with Go, take the classes. Nominal fee for the amount of time it will save you and the amount of time I put into building all this. Cool. So now uh, we have temp, we have prereq, and then we have template. And uh, prereq, see what this says, variable declaration, data structures, and then we have some hands-on exercises. So we need to understand variables, you know, the basics of the language. So that gives us a little bit of that. And uh, here's a thing of scale scope in Go. I like this picture. There's function scope and then there's scope to a page, right, to a file, and then there's scope to a package, and then there's universe scope. So that's kind of cool. That's from Caleb Doxy. Awesome guy. And uh, then here's a little example that we've all seen. So this is all that prereq stuff. Now we're going to jump in and start learning about templates. So let's see what we have to say about templates and understanding templates. So uh, this is Markdown, and Markdown allows things to be sort of formatted, uh, just like formatting. So GitHub uh, goes to 11, Golang Web Dev is where I'm going. And uh, here we have templates, and what, right here it kind of formatted it. So understanding templates. Basically what this is going to tell you is that we could have a template like this, Dear name, are you tired of high electric bills? We have noticed that your house at, and it could merge it with data. So dear Mr. Jones, dear Mr. Smith, right? And so a template is something where we have a template, and then for every record in a database, we merge the data with that template. Capiche? Yeah, so that's how we build. We build a web page, and then there's going to be certain places on that web page where custom data related to you know, a person will be filled in. My picture gets filled in. On the template, it say, put user picture here. On the template, it says, put username here. On the template, it says, put you know, user Twitter handle here. On the template, user description here. Right? And so we're filling in with data from a database. They are not building this page every time for every user. They build it once and then they just run it against data and fill it in. And likewise, all of this stuff is being filled in by data. This is not being filled in by, well, I take that back. Because if you come to this page and you are not me, you do not see that edit button. You see follow, right? So it is changing based upon who's there. What is, uh, what is not changing on this page? The structure, right? These words probably are staying the same no matter who comes to the page. This little bird's always the same. So that's, you know, there's not going to be, it's not filled in with data from a, that probably might change actually if there's, maybe it has an alert. It's probably the same every time. Um, so everything else, you know, it's pretty custom to whoever's looking at it. But that's templating. That's the first step in templating, and that's exactly what this says here. And so the first 
first example that we have for templating, and I'm just going to start going through the code here because it has been a little while since I've done all this. Yeah, actually, 15 months, May of 2017 is the last time I taught this, and that's when the class ended, and we are now 2018, September, almost October. So uh, there's an example of a template. So that's an introduction to templating. We'll leave it at that, and we'll explore further in the next video. How's that sound? If you're watching this on YouTube land, please hit like and subscribe. <laughs> See you in the next video.